Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on InfoSec. Do you know friends, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, job growth in information security is expected to be rising from 37% from 2012 to 2023, which is much faster than the average of all occupations. There are various important certifications such as CISSP, CISM and CISA. After completing the certifications, you can get a very good paying jobs such as security engineer, pen tester, certified information system security professional with a salary ranging from 8.5 LPA to 50 LPA based on experience, company and location. Now before we head on to our today's agenda, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So first, we are going to start with what is information security. Moving ahead, we are going to discuss about TNETs of information security. Then we are going to learn about how to calculate availability. Then we are going to learn about seven domains of typical IT infrastructure. And at the end, we are going to end our session with a short quiz. So let's start with what is information security. The internet of today is a global network with over 5 billion users. It comprises nearly every government, business, and organization on the planet. Having that many users on the same network, however, would not have been sufficient to make the internet a game-changing innovation. These users required a mechanism to connect documents and resources across the computers. In other words, a user on computer A is required a simple method of opening a document on computer B. This requirement resulted in the development of a system that defines how documents and resources are related across the network machines. The World Wide Web is the name given to this system. You may be familiar with the cyberspace or simply the web. The process and tools designed and deployed to protect sensitive business information from modification, disruption, destruction and inspection are referred to as information security. There is even more data to steal. Now that the Internet of Things is connecting personal devices, home devices and vehicles to the Internet, all users must protect their data from the intruders. Every government that wants to ensure its national security must prioritize cyber security. Every organization that needs to protect its information, assets and sensitive data is responsible for the data security such as your social security numbers, credit card numbers and many more. At the heart of the problem is the lack of the security in the transmission control protocol, which is the internet protocol, is a TCP IP communication protocol, which is basically a language that computers most commonly use to communicate across the internet. TCP IP is not a single protocol, but rather a set of protocol designed to communicate across a network. TCP IP named after two most important protocols that allows any two computers to communicate with one and another. A network is formed by connecting two or more computers to send the data between the network computers. TCP IP divides messages into chunks or packets. The issue is that data can be read within each IP packet using simple software that is freely available to anyone. This readable mode is referred to as clear text. To make data more secure, you must hide or encrypt data sent within a TCP IP packet. Now let's see what is in the TCP IP packet. So you have a source port number which is of 2 bytes. Then you have destination port number which has 2 bytes. Then we have sequence number which is of 4 bytes. Then we have acknowledgement number which is of 4 bytes. Then we have data offsets which is of 4 bits. Then there is reserved bits and there is control flags which is of 9 bits. Then we have window size which is of 2 bytes. Then we have checksum which is of 2 bytes. Then we have urgent pointer which is of 2 bytes. And if you want to send any optional data which consists of between 0 to 40 bytes is also available in the TCP IP header. So the packet size of the all information included ranges between 20 to 60 bytes of data which can be sent across a TCP IP packet. 
between any two or more devices. Now, all of this begs this question. All of this begs the question. If the internet is so dangerous, why do so many people use it? The answer is web explosive growth from the mid 1990s to the early 2000s. Connecting to the internet provided instant access to the web and its numerous resources. The allure of simple global connectivity drove the demand to connect. This demand and subsequent growth aided in the driving down the cost of high-speed communications. Households, businesses and governments now have access to the affordable high-speed internet. And as wireless and cellular connections have become more common and affordable, staying connected has become easier regardless of where you are and what devices you need to connect. Now, let's check on the tenets of information security. The majority of people agree that private information should be kept secure. But what does exactly secure information imply? Secure information meets three main tenets or properties of information. You will meet the requirements of secure information if you can ensure these three tenets. The three principles are as follows. The first one is confidentiality. Only authorized users have access to the information. Then we have integrity. Only authorized users have access to change the information. And finally, we have availability. Authorized users have access to the information whenever they need it. Now let's go through each one of them. The first one is confidentiality. The term confidentiality is frequently used. It entails keeping information in private form apart from those who have legal access to it. The following are few of the examples of confidential data, such as individual privacy, business intellectual property, and national securities for countries and government. Many people are using credit cards to make online purchases as e-commerce grows. This necessitates the entry of personal information into e-commerce websites. Consumers must exercise caution in order to safeguard their personal identity and private data. Laws require businesses to use security controls to protect their customers and personal information. A security control is something that a company implements to help reduce the risk. The following are some of the examples of such controls, such as providing employees with annual security awareness training. This serves to remind the employees about the importance of protecting personal information. It also raises awareness of the organization's security, policy, standard procedure and guidelines framework. Next is Integrity. Integrity deals with the validity and accuracy of the data. Data lacking integrity, that is data, are not accurate or not valid, are number of use. For some organizations, data and information are intellectual property assets. Examples include copyrights, patent, secret formulas and customer databases. This information can have great value. Next is availability. The term availability is frequently used in everyday conversation. You probably pay attention to the availability of your internet service, TV service or cell phone service. For example, in the context of information security, availability is commonly defined as the amount of time users can access a system, application or data. The following are the examples of some of the common availability time measurement such as uptime. Uptime is a total amount of time that a system, application or data is available. Within the given calendar month, uptime is typically measured in seconds, minutes and hours. Uptime is frequently expressed as a percentage of available time. For example, uptime is 99.95%. Next is downtime. Downtime is a total amount of time that a system, application or service is unavailable. Data is inaccessible. Downtime is also measured in seconds, minutes and hour. Next is availability. Availability is a mathematical calculation in which we calculate the total uptime divided by 
total uptime plus downtime. Now let's calculate availability for a month. So we have all over here that the total availability equals to total uptime divided by total uptime plus total downtime. So suppose in a 30 days calendar month, we have the total uptime as 30 into 24 into 60, which is equals to 43,200 minutes. Now let's say the system is down for 30 minutes in a 30 days calendar month. So the, our availability can be calculated as 43,000 by 200 divided by 43,200 plus 30, which is equals to approximately 0 0.9993. So if you multiply it by 100, so you would get it approximately as 99.93%. So this turns out to be our availability for a 30 days calendar month. I hope so, you would have got idea how to calculate availability. The telecommunications and internet service providers provide service level agreements to their customers, which is an SLAs, an SLA contract that ensures the minimum monthly availability of a service for a WAN and internet access links. SLAs are provided in conjunctions with WAN services and a dedicated internet access links. A monthly uptime service level commitment is measured by its availability. As in the sidebar's monthly availability example, 30 minutes of downtime in a 30-day calendar month equals to 99.993% availability. Typically service provider SLAs ranging from 99.95 to 99.999% of availability. I hope so, you would have got some idea regarding this. Now let's move on to the seven domains of a typical IT infrastructure. What role do these three system security teammates play in a typical IT infrastructure? First, let's take a look at a typical IT infrastructure. Most IT infrastructure, whether in a small business or a large government agency, are publicly traded corporations include the seven domains. So in this figure, you can see we have a user domain, we have a workstation domain, then we have a LAN domain, we have LAN to WAN domain, we have remote access domain, then we have a system or application domain. These seven domains are typically found in an IT infrastructure and each one necessitates appropriate security control. And these controls must meet the CIA triad, which means confidentiality, integrity and availability. The following is an overview which I have shown you about the seven domains of typical IT infrastructure. Now, let's have some quiz discussions about the things which we have discussed earlier. So, this will be a very short quiz and it will give you a brief overview of some of the good questions. So, our first question is, software manufacturers limit their liability when selling softwares using which of the following? Your options are, end user license agreement, confidentiality agreement, software development agreement and none. You can take your time for a few seconds, then I will show you the answer. So the right answer is end user license agreement. An end user license agreement is a legally binding contract between the owner of a product, which is often a software and the end user, more specifically a contract between a product's license or the licensee. Our next question is the dash Tnet of the information system security is concerned with the recovery of time objective. So you would have got some idea because we have done some activity regarding this. Take your time, then I will tell you the answer. So if we basically talk about confidentiality, it entails keeping information in private form, apart from those who have legal access to it. And if we talk about integrity, it deals with the validity and the accuracy of data. And if I talk about the availability, and as I have told you earlier, availability is basically the mathematical calculation of total uptime divided by total uptime plus downtime, which shows that for how much time your system or application is available. So you are guessing it right. The right answer is availability. Now let's discuss the next question. The dash is a weakest link in an IT infrastructure. Your options are system or application domain, LAN to WAN domain, your user domain and remote access domain. 
And the correct answer to this question is user domain. In the information security, human actors are the weakest links. Giving someone access to the information systems requires trust. Now, let's discuss our final question, which says that internet IP packets are to clear text what encrypted IP packets are to. I repeat, internet IP packets are to clear text what an encrypted IP packets are to. Now first let me explain you what is a clear text. Clear text basically refers to the information that is stored or transmitted in an unencrypted form. It is already in the consumable and readable form that was already anticipated. So you can take your time up to 10 seconds then I will tell you the answer. So the correct answer to this question is ciphertext. We had options like confidentiality, VPN and cryptography algorithms. But none of them matches to what is asked in this question. It says that what an encrypted IP packets. So it generally means the ciphertext. Ciphertext is basically kind of an encrypted text that has been converted from plain text by an encryption algorithm such as your RSA, MD5 or MD3 algorithm. Ciphertext cannot be read until it has been decrypted. The decryption cipher is an algorithm that converts the ciphertext to the plain text. That was all for this session on what is information security. I hope so, you would have definitely enjoyed this session today. Just a quick info guys, IntelliPath provides an advanced certification in cyber security by EICT Academy IIT Guwahati. You will get to learn the most important concepts such as ethical hacking, penetration testing and network security in this course. You'll get to learn from IIT faculty and industry experts. Reach us out to know more.